now. Six Sports presents the Dean Trailways Fifth Quarter. Welcome to trophy raising season. District titles were on the line for our high school football teams. So you know we have a good Dean Trailways fifth quarter in store. I'm Ian Kress. And I'm Haley Schongart. Back in week two, Mason took down DeWitt 42 to 23. And right after, both teams knew there was a chance oh, they'd yeah. meet again. And tonight they clashed <laughs> for the district title. This time the showdown went down at the Bulldogs house and the Panthers came into town with revenge on their minds. Just a few minutes in, DeWitt finds their go-to guy, Trav Moore, who dashes in from a few yards out. But Mason would have an answer in a speedy guy of their own, A.J. Martell. He is so shifty, he faked out the camera girl. <laughs> Martell ties things up at 7, and that would be all of the preheating the Bulldogs would need. Kaysen Carswell winds up a dot to a wide-open Tyler Baker, who has got nothing but green grass in front of him. A 59-yard TD for the senior to help Mason lead by two scores at the break. And this catch might be one of the best our cameras got all night. Kaysen Carswell again connects with Cole Reese, who makes an unreal oh. grab with a defender all in his face. One of his two tutties on the night, Mason captures its third consecutive district title, 42-7 to the final. A memorable game, to say the least. We told these guys coming into it, you're probably going to play your last game here. You better, you better leave it all on the field. And they did. They played, they played their hearts out. Um, to have a running clock on Dewitt two times in the same season is a pretty special thing, and I'm very proud of these guys. We were a little nervous at first. We knew they were going to play their best game of the year on us. They wanted that revenge because they knew they knew we were coming in here. They wanted to take it in here, but we we didn't let them. We we bounced back. We played great in the second half. It, it was amazing. What a win for the Bulldogs. Staying oh, yeah. in Division 3, Parma Western welcomed in Lakeshore. And similar to last week, the Panther defense was on the prowl. Second half, Gibson French, great name, comes up with the interception, takes it all the way back for the pick six to bring out the turnover chain. Oh, Western yeah. went up 31-0 at that point. The offense then woke up for Lakeshore. Dylan Moore finds an opening in the defense and gets the Lancers on the board. But Parma was cooking with too much gas tonight. Junior Reed Myers throws a beauty and Maverick Ham makes the incredible grab. Parma Western wins 38 to 20 for the program's third ever district title. Well, it's not often a program that has won two state titles in the last five years fits the bill of a Cinderella team, but that is the position Lansing Catholic found itself in this fall. Yeah, the Cougars finished just three and six in the regular season, but shocked <laughs> Michigan Center last week to advance to the district championship. And for more on their district title matchup, we bring in the third member of our team, Tyler Drazinga. Hey guys, yeah, Lansing Catholic took on Ovid LC tonight in a rematch of last year's district title game, which Lansing Catholic won 20 to zero. It was a one score game at the half tonight with Ovid LC leading 20 to 13. And the Marauders deliver the first punch of the second half. Trice Tokar airs it out, hits his man Jamison Custer in stride. He waltzes into the end zone to put OE on top, 28 to 13. Later in the quarter, Marauders on the move again. Clayton Frucci takes the handoff, finds Paydirt on a short touchdown run, 35-13 over at LC. The Marauder defense was dominant in the second half. They had four sacks in the half, including this one from Cohen Brown. And with just over a minute to go, Frucci puts the exclamation point on it with another short touchdown run right here. Ovid LC outscores Lansing Catholic 22-0 in the second half to win the district title 42-13. It's the first district title since 2009 for the Marauder program, and head coach Travis Long says his team has had to overcome a lot to get here. Well, we had some lofty goals at the beginning of the season, league championship, you know, lots of wins, and we had some injuries early on. And uh, we were young and made uh, some young mistakes, but we've grown up and, and the boys are playing great right now. Not a great start to the season, but we finished strong. You know, guys up front, owe it to them, you know, working their butts off all game. It's my boys up front, so it's awesome. I love it. 
Shifting to Division 4, undefeated Portland took its show on the road as the Raiders were taking on Hastings. In the last play before halftime, Hastings QB Owen Carroll will step back, scramble on the run, look downfield for Jet Bronham, and connects with him for the 20-yard touchdown. In the fourth quarter, though, Portland was leading and went to its bread and butter. Caden Thalen Who to else? the house. He had 281 rushing yards and four touchdowns tonight. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Hastings oh, yeah. trying to fight back. Carroll drops back, looks for Bronham again, but it's picked off. Guess who? Caden Thalen. seals the deal for Portland. The Raiders win the district title with a 38-24 win and will face Niles next week for the district title. Well, staying in Division 4, how about Hazlitt going Ooh. on the road and taking down Chelsea 30-22? to The Vikings trailed by one at halftime and will now take on Goodrich next week for the regional title. <laughs> Yeah, great win for them. Oh, yeah. Well, it is now time for us to take our first water break of the night, but don't worry, the fifth quarter fun is far from over. Yeah, after the break, we'll take a trip down to J-Town to check in with the reigning state champs, Jackson Loom and Christy, who are looking to be like Drake and go back to Oh, back. I see what you did there. <laughs> Plus, East Lansing was looking to capture its third district title in the last four years. And if you know, you know, you know. grab a snack and meet us right back. Welcome back. Conference foes clashed in the district championship at Pawamo Westphalia tonight as the Pirates hosted Bath. PW beat the Fighting Bees 21-0 in week two of the regular season. Jeremy Miller and his squad looking for their 12th district title in 13 years. And they got it going early, opening drive of the game. Brayton Thalen gets the handoff, kicks it outside, and he's got daylight to the 40, to the 30, 
to the 20 before he's finally taken down inside the 10. The Pirates would cap it off with a touchdown moments later. PW back to work. Dylan May keeps it himself, eludes a couple of defenders before strolling into the end zone. PW up 14. Just before the end of the first half, how about this play from Gabe Miller? Throws it way up in the air, and Isaac Thalen comes down with it. What a grab to extend the Pirate lead. PW rolls to a district title, 42-15, to the fun. Well, it feels great. Uh, like I told those guys, this championship's a big deal. And, uh, of course, we didn't get one last year, and for them to come back and uh, work hard and improve every week, um, you know, I just wanted to be uh, you know, thankful for it and to enjoy every minute. The Napoleon Pirates came to the Titans home turf in this district matchup and the Titans see right through the play call and are right on the Pirate QB as Pierre Gray Jr. gets the tackle for loss to help get the ball back in Lumen's hands. Then Timmy Crowley hands the ball off to London Hampton who breaks off for the sideline to help move the sticks. Next, Crowley sees his man Isaac Rayberg open and he hits him in stride. He gets a helpful push to move the sticks again. Now, oh, look at them. They're still going. They're going. They're going. They're going, going, going. <laughs> now on the goal line of Napoleon, the Titans give it back to old reliable London Hampton, and he easily gets into the end zone for the score. Lumen Christie claims another district title, 26-0 the final. Another one. In another Division one. 2, East Lansing opened its playoff run with a win over Lansing ever. And a little history fact for you. Okay. It was the Trojans' 65th meeting all time against the Vikings, which is the most of any opponent. Wow. Well, tonight was the polar opposite type of matchup for the Trojans. They faced White Lake Lakeland for the first time ever. All right. Lakeland would score on its first drive of the game, but it would be no problem for these playmaking Trojans. Jace Calarizio is going to cut it to the outside and show why he is the top running back in the state for the class of 2025. We see you. He finds the end zone. Now this was a 7-7 game at halftime and in the second half the Trojans took the top off. Clarizio with a serious boost of speed goes 60 yards untouched for his third touchdown of the game and EL wasn't finished there. Ben Fletcher is going to roll out and find a wide open Colin Kapilovic in the end zone. The what son of Michigan State offensive lineman coach Chris Kapilovic adds to the lead. East Lansing would score 28 points in the second half. Takes down Lakeland 35-7 to to claim back-to-back -back district titles. And the key to the huge second half was... We wanted to run the ball uh, to establish that uh, that kind of edge, that kind of that kind of edge that we that we want to do. We just locked in and uh, brought it all together and just stuck together as a team, and we're here now. So the job's not finished. Speaking of back-to-back, -back, the Ithaca Yellow Jackets were back in the district title game for the second year in a row after a nail-biting 28-27 win over Fowler last week. And while Ithaca is undefeated this season, they were the ones who had to hit the road to face a 9-1 New Lothrop team for the district title. An all-insect matchup between the Hornets and the Yellow Jackets. Ithaca looking to sting first in this one. Nathan Mikesell breaks free from a couple of arm tackles and busts it to the outside. A huge gain up the sideline before he's pushed out of bounds at the 16. However, the drive would stall and New Lothrop marches down the field on the ensuing possession. Rakeem Woods gets the carry on a sweep, finds his way to the end zone to cap off the drive. 8-0 Hornets, but Ithaca answers right back. Jackson Kahn has all sorts of time, fires it deep to Riley White. He's got nothing but green grass in front of him. This was a back and forth battle all night long and Ithaca Goes on to win it thanks to a field goal by Joe Daw with just eight seconds left. Ithaca wins 29-28. Back-to-back one-point wins and back-to-back -back district titles for the Yellow Jackets. Well, they love the drama, that's oh, for they sure. Do. Well, the high school football talk isn't done just yet because earlier today, former Lansing Catholic coach Jim Ahern was honored with the 2023 Edward Vandervoort Award. Which has been awarded annually since 1953 to someone who has done a lot to advance the status of athletic teams in the community. Yeah, that defines him perfectly. Ahern spent 47 years as a head coach across two states. He coached for 30 years at Ithaca, then went down to Florida to coach, only to return to Michigan in 2000. And, nine and Coach Lansing Catholic, which led to the Cougars winning a state title in 2019. Ahern had no idea he was receiving this award today as current Lansing Catholic coach Jim Baker convinced him Mark D'Antonio would be speaking. Well, there was no D'Antonio, and while Ahern was shocked to hear the news, it was definitely well-deserved.
Well, I think he became everyone's grandpa, to be honest with you. Um, he came in and he just, he's got such a kind heart. He was going through a tough time in his life. He just lost his wife to cancer. And I think he needed us as much as we needed him. Did not have any idea what I was going to do and it uh, ended up at Lansing Catholic, which is probably the best thing that ever happened to me. It was a really good place for me to be at the time. And uh, it's really a family, family atmosphere there. Awesome and well-deserved for Coach Ahern. We'll shift gears to the collegiate level after the break. The Michigan State hockey team opened up Big Ten play with a road trip to Columbus. And the Spartan men's soccer team also played the Buckeyes in the first round of the Big Ten tournament. MSU hoping to avenge its only loss of the season. Those highlights and more when the Deaton Trailways fifth quarter returns. Ten days ago, MSU men's soccer was in the hunt for the Big Ten regular season title. To put themselves in prime position, they just needed a win over Ohio State, and the Buckeyes had won just one Big Ten game all season coming in. Instead, the Spartans watched their Big Ten title hopes slip away with a 3-2 loss. But they didn't have to wait too long to seek revenge, as their first round matchup in the Big Ten tournament was against those same Buckeyes. Scoreless in the second half until Ohio State's Andre Roberts is in the right place at the right time to put home a rebound. One last chance for MSU with under a minute left, but Jeremy Spadafra's attempt is just high and wide. Ohio State tops MSU again, one to nothing. So they will now wait their fate for the NCAA tournament. Yep. Well, the Michigan State hockey team opened up Big Ten play tonight, and just like the men's soccer team, Ohio State was the opponent. And there is no doubt the Spartans were ready to get back out on the ice and bounce back after being swept by Boston College last weekend. Getting right to the good stuff, Spartans already up 1-0 in the first, and you know what they say, two goals are better than one. Gavin O'Connell makes it look easy and nets his second goal of the game, both within 15 minutes of each other, might I add. Ooh. And that was just their warm-up. In the third, Carson Dorwart buries a rebound even Tom Izzo would be impressed <laughs> by. His sixth of the season, Michigan State puts the beat down on the Buckeyes. Guys, six to zero, the final. 
Also want to mention, too, the MSU volleyball team swept Maryland tonight. Oh. So another great win for Leah Johnson and company. And yeah. we featured them on the coaches show, right? Yeah, we sat down with, I sat down with Taylor Holdham. She's from New Zealand and has a really interesting story getting to East Lansing. Tyler talked to the Monty MacArthur. That's going to be it for tonight's show. See you later.